coming soon to a tabletop near you, one of the most epic two-player head-to-head tactical code-breaking games is getting a new facelift. Mastermind. In Hi everyone, Luke from The Broken Meeple, thanks for tuning in, and like I said in the cheesy intro, we are literally talking about co-op mastermind. That is pretty much what this new release, Rising 5 Ruins of Asteros is. Now, I mean, the tagline, I'm getting sick and tired of taglines for games, it's basically Rising 5. The idea is, is pretty much co-op mastermind. You and up to f four other players are essentially controlling these five characters. Think like a cross between, the way I kind of described it is that they kind of remind me of a cross between the Guardians of the Galaxy and the old cartoon Dungeons and Dragons motley crew, if you get what I mean by that. And the idea is, is that there is this rune gate that has opened, it's letting all these Gribblies out on this planet and it will soon endanger the whole galaxy. So you have to go and seal it. You go onto the planet, you kill some monsters, you find some cool relics and items, but essentially you must seal this gate by working out the rune code for it. And the rune code is set up in the exact same way as Mastermind. That classic game from, what, the 1980s? I forget when it was out. But that two-player head-to-head one that you had little pegs and you were, you know, it made you think. It was, it was a neat little game, I mean, for the times. But obviously you wouldn't necessarily play it now. Until here. It's like I say, co-op mastermind, but there's more to it than just the code. This is about a 30 to 45 minute game, you know, maybe an hour if you're, you know, well, an hour or hour or quarter if you've got slow players or you're playing it for the first time with five. And the idea is, is that you play action cards in your hand to control these characters and go off to different locations. You'll either find helpers that give you bonuses, they will find uh, you know, artifacts that will give you benefits in the game, or you will go kill monsters. If you can kill them, then they will give you the access that you need in order to seal the gate because you've got to light up these like pillars ahead of time. But you got to be careful. Fail to kill the monsters or take too long going through that deck and the sun might go into a red solar eclipse and then the game just ends with you in a loss. In addition, you've got to be careful about drawing too many cards because if the deck runs out, it's kind of like a la pandemic in a way, you lose as well. So to succeed, you must work out that code and you've got a funky little app on your phone to do it with. Though we will get onto that a little bit later. The first thing I can say with this game is that it is a motley mix of component quality. Inside you've got these rune tokens that you use to kind of track what uh, aspect of a code you're looking at. They're a little bit flimsy and they kind of are starting to wear already after barely any games. That's a bit of a letdown. But what this game does have in terms of component quality is the artwork. Now, he's not my favourite artist and that's only because of styling, it's just my preference on art style. But if you are a Vincent Dutrait fan, this guy hits it out of the park with this one. I mean, it may not be my style of art, but I can't deny that it is gorgeous and really well done. If you're a fan of his work, it's laddered all over the board, all over the cards and the character models. You will love this game for the artwork especially. Now, I said it's co-op because you don't control a character each, you use the cards. You play the cards and depending on how many you have, you can either support each other in various locations or you just you know, control the character and do so many actions yourself. Each has a special ability, so you know, you've got to utilize them to the best that you can, but obviously the crux of that deck is you choose how many cards you want to draw at the end of a round. You have to draw at least one, but you could draw more. Maybe you want more variety. Problem is, the Eclipse cards that make that timer go down to the end, and the fact that the deck itself is its own timer, might make you hesitate about drawing too many cards, so it's a cool little balancing act. But the crux of it is you are working out the code. So you will first take a picture with the app that will have the code that it's set up for you. It basically gives you the puzzle. And then when you have the means to unlock the code after switching a few of those runes around, it will tell you in classic Mastermind style which runes are non-existent, which are correct but in the wrong position, and which are correct and where they should be. 
And the idea is, is that you will keep going until you eventually find out the real code and, and thus win the game. Now, the app is a kind of a gimmicky thing for it. I mean, you could do this with a Game Master screen. It gives you a variant in the box, but to be honest, why would you? The person using that screen really doesn't have a lot to do apart from just sit there and keep the game going. I suppose that's quite useful if you're, you're teaching the game, maybe at a convention or a demo thing, but honestly, use the app. So much nicer, and at least you can play the game and join in. The app is not perfect, though. It has this great introduction sequence that sounds more epic than the game actually is, and more on that later. But the problem is, is the camera is a little bit dodgy on this, because in the first game we played, we took a couple of pictures and we went through and it's like, okay, hang on a minute, this contradicts a previous guess, what gives? And it wasn't until we looked back at previous results that we noticed that the camera had, had mistaken what runes were in certain positions. The light has to be perfect for that camera to accurately depict what the runes are. And if it gets it wrong, and you don't discover this until much later in the game, your whole game is pretty much ruined. Thankfully, they do at least give a manual mode so that you can just key them in manually. I recommend you just use that all the time because if the camera is going to be that fiddly, who cares whether you have to hover over it and take a picture or just input it manually. At least the app is doing it for you and at least you know it's correct. If you struggle with the rules, I don't see how. The rules to this are dirt simple. You know, you could pick up and play this game easily enough, but the app even has a rule book, you know, a PDF of the rule book that you can easily just swipe through in order to learn more of the game. Very simple. This is definitely gateway level. There's very little you need to know. Most people know how to play Mastermind. You play the cards and you've got the win and lose conditions. Whoopee. Even combat is basically a die roll plus a couple of ways to boost your die roll. It's pretty straightforward. Any new player who's never seen a game could easily get into this and it's certainly recommended for that purpose. What you do need to be a little careful of though is not to give the wrong impression about how epic the game is. All this artwork, the board as it's laid out, you know, the introduction sequence on the app, it makes the game sound a bit more epic than it actually is. People might go into this thinking, oh, we're going to get this grandiose adventure game with some deduction elements, sweet. It's mostly the deduction element. Everything else you do is kind of a means to an end and it's pretty simple. You know, not to say that's a bad thing, that's the whole point of this game. It's quick, it's light, it's simple. But some heavier gamers, you know, might, might jump into this expecting more from the box and the lavish artwork and realise that essentially it's like co-op mastermind, just slightly overproduced in that art department. You know, like I say, not a bad thing, but you need to know this going in. So, like I say, the gameplay itself, it's good fun. You are cooperating with each other. You know, you, you have the hand of cards hidden from other players, but you could just simply lay them out in front of you, however you want to do it. I mean, let's face it, we do it in pandemic, so why not here? And, you know, there's only a marginal chance of the alpha gamer getting too much in the way because everybody can join in and sort out the code. Even if you don't know the best way to use the action cards in that, you can at least be thinking about that mastermind code and going, so that could be there, that could be there, and on that tells us this, so logically this, you know, so everybody's got something to do, whether it's the game part or the uh, co-op mastermind part. But all in all, it's quick, light, and easy. It goes up to five players, so you've got that dreaded five taken care of, and with five players, it shouldn't take you more than, say, 45 minutes to an hour unless people are playing really slow. With less players, you could get this done in half an hour. It's not quite what I would call a filler game, you know, it's a little bit too long for that, but it's very quick. You could do this at the end of the night to wrap up, or you could do this as your first game of the night just to get, you know, warmed up for the main event. It does what it says on the tin, really. It's just a simple, light, mastermind game. There's not much else I can really say about it. Half decent component quality, fun gameplay, the action card selection, you know, doesn't. it's not brain burning, it, it, but it requires you to at least be efficient with the cards because you might blow through all the one character's cards and then realize, oh, okay, uh, we need to use that character's ability rather promptly and we don't have any more cards for him. So, with, and with less players, you have technically slightly less options in the card department unless you start drawing lots, but you got a hand size limit. So, if anything, I'd probably say that the game's a little bit easier with more players because when you've got more players, there's more cards around that you can sort of take track of. Whereas with less players, you may start off with a slightly increased hand limit, but there's still overall, I think, less cards for you to work with. But 
It's not that the game is that difficult. I mean, we played this on standard. We did it pretty easily, actually. I'd almost say that playing this on easy mode is just pointless because it's so simple. Standard is a good way to introduce the game. And then after that, I kind of just say, play on hard mode. Have a bit of a challenge. It's not that the code gets any more difficult. It's just the, the, the rate in which you go through that deck and get the eclipse symbols is slightly harder. It's a bit like the epidemics in Pandemic, the way it's set up. But even then, it's not that much harder. I would just play this on hard mode whenever I you know, play with most people because I think that's kind of the way we would do it. But with younger people, with families, you might tone the difficulty down. And for those of you that can't really find the friends or the family at the moment, there's a solo mode as well in case you just fancy the game of Mastermind by yourself. So, Rising 5, Runes of Estoros. It's decent enough. I'm going to hang on to it. It's a good gateway game that I can teach. It's a quick little solo one I can check out. Not the best thing ever. I'm not going to say it's a massive monumental blockbuster of a game. But it does nicely what it says on the tin. And is a nice sort of relief to see that some light games, some light quick games can still be entertaining. And are actually still getting published. You know, we're getting so many long, convoluted, complex games nowadays. It's nice to get something a little bit simple. So Rising 5 for me personally is... Probably about a seven. It's a decent game, not you know, the bee's knees or anything, but I think for some people, particularly uh, families or anybody who grew up with that Mastermind game, they're going to get a kick out of this and enjoy it. And if you like Vincent Dutrait, you'll love the look of it at least. So that's it for me. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel, the podcast, the Facebook, the Twitter group, and come find me at Portsmouth on board if you're in the Hampshire area of the UK. Either way, I'll hopefully get to game with you soon. Take care, and even if, you know, you, you screw everything up and the world is invaded by Gribbly monsters because you couldn't work out a four-digit code, still only a game, so I forgive you. Take care, see you next time.